Okay. Good evening. I will call to order the Shakopee Public School School Board meeting of uh, August 26th to order. So please call the roll. Aldrich. Here. Christensen. Here. McKeon. Here. Peterson. Here. Tomzik. Here. Tucker. Here. And Barman. Yes, ma'am. Can you please join me by standing for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, we're back to We Are uh, Shocking Schools and Having Good News. And the first, we're going to talk about uh, state level competition in tennis. And we have our tennis coach here, Drew. You want to bring up your participant as well and talk a little about this great achievement. Yeah, so um, this is Theron Anturi, and his doubles partner, Alex Courtgard, started his first day of school at MSU Mankato today, so he oh. couldn't be with us. He wanted to FaceTime in, but we didn't know if he was going to call his class schedule or not. Um, but this past June, Theron and Alex made it to state as a doubles team out of Section 2AA, and they played at the State Boys Tennis Tournament on June 6th and 7th, right? Think yeah. So, yeah. yeah, and they won um, one of their matches and made it to the second day, and only half of the state <coughs> competitors get to do that. So it was really cool to watch them grow and watch Alex get to do that as senior as well. I still get through him for two more seasons. So Ooh, two, yeah. more. Two, two more. Excellent. Yeah, two more. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll expect to see progress. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Yeah. Well, congrats. Let's give you a hand first. Got a certificate for you through. And if I'm not mistaken, you have a tennis family, right? Yeah, I, have I think my son played with your brother. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A few years ago. Oh, Sean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. We'll look forward to even well, greater uh, results. I actually played with you Sean. Did you? Yeah, I played with Sean in summer tennis. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's all work. It is. Don't hold that against me. Right? Okay. We can take that one. Can you do that one? Yep, I will. Do you guys slide over this way? Nice photo. Underneath the desk, man. We just want to sit over there. That looks really good. One, two, three. Perfect. Great job. Somebody jump up on you too. Let me jump up on you. All right. Thank you, Jason. I'm a shy. All right, the next item, Jeff. You get to come forward. So I'm going to read what was provided for me. You can maybe provide a little color commentary on this, but this is what it says. I need glasses for that. So the Association of School Business Officials, is it kind of known as ASPO? It's or, ASPO. Okay. Yeah. ASPO International has awarded Shakopee Public Schools District with the Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting. This honor recognizes districts that have met the program's high standards for financial reporting and accountability. Our school district earned the Certificate of Excellence for its comprehensive annual financial report for fiscal year ended 2018. And we want to congratulate our entire finance department. Jeff gets to actually represent them tonight. We know it's a lot of people that go into this and a lot of work. Yeah, for sure. We're it's, very proud and, and, and appreciative of all the work you guys do yeah. to try this accomplishment. It certainly is the whole team. So, um, and I asked them to be here tonight. But. <laughs> 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 it's a summer. So, it, yeah, that's about, I think, the fairness in financial reporting, transparency, accuracy. So, um, and we'll, I think this is the third year that we've received this. And, um, and we'll submit the, the uh, audit report this year as well. So, yeah. Well, congratulations. Reggie's got you taken care of. Finally get my picture. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you got to the choice. Second, Joe. Paul, second. Any discussion on that item? All those in favor, say you're saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. We'll move to consent. Uh, I guess it's fairly lengthy. 
sure you can sit there and kind of look at it because we've got a lot of new hires, we've got a lot of the uh, extracurricular assignments, that sort of thing, uh, a couple of change orders. So, any comments or discussion? Well, let me get it on the agenda for or on the table first. Uh, do I have a motion to so move. Consent? Thank you, I'll Matt. Second, Angela. Any discussion on consent? Well, I'd just like to pause and say thank you to Jeff. Very good. Uh, probably I'll have some comments, but Jeff, thank you for coming and helping us. Uh, we, we are in a very different state now financially than we were a couple years ago when Jeff joined us. Suzanne had done yeoman's work to get to the bottom of where we were, and Jeff's really taken it and revolutionized processes and uh, brought a lot of integrity and credibility to our finance department. So Absolutely. I want to thank you for all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right like a are we going to pull that so we voted against accepting it? <laughs> <laughs> we, can vote against. we can vote against it. <laughs> 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 it's his own. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. What would you do in that case? No, no thank you very much, Jeff. We, yeah. we certainly appreciate it. Yeah. 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 No, thank you very much, Jeff. We, we certainly appreciate it, and uh, you have made a, a significant difference, and we do value your continuing uh, participation for the next next few months, and then if there's ways that we can continue to use your expertise, sure. we certainly look forward to that as well. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. much. Definitely, we only need some good shoes to fill. Yes. All right. Um, so with that, comment, thank you. And I'm going to add one more comment. Please. For all the other names here, and some of them that we don't know at all, I know that they have given value to our school, too, and want to thank oh, all of them as well. It's, it's hard and important work that we do. All right, with that, uh, any further comments or discussion? All right, all those in favor of accepting mm -hmm. consent as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes. Let's move to page too soon. Item six, Jeff, you want to come on up? And we'll do a finance update. Is this oh, we're going to have to do it. We were. That's right. Sorry, Jeff. Sorry. If we could do 8.3, yep. yep. that would be great. I, so, as I, said, I do have it. I do have it. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, you want to come on up now? Come on, on down. For sure. For that. Oh. And so, for the benefit of those maybe watching, this is 8.3 point three is to prepare, prepare an acronym update, and we're going to learn about, actually, a really nice article uh, in the paper mm -hmm. um, that talked a lot about this, but it's going to be nice to hear from you guys, too. Yeah, too. Good. So I'll kind of start, and then these guys will take over. And so we've kind of uh, named ourselves as the Crisis and Safety Steering Committee, this group right here. <laughs> and so um, I'll go ahead and introduce yourself, and I'll talk a little more, and let you guys take over. I'm Gina Boots. I'm a special services supervisor here. I'm Nick Erdy, skills psychologist. Ed Zenmet, buildings and ground manager. And I'm Dave Orlowski, uh, assistant superintendent. And we're the steering committee for this work that's happening right now. And the way we're organizing, yeah, well, this is new for Mike, too. Um, <laughs> We've never given ourselves acronyms oh, now. <laughs> well, I, I wrote it out. It almost works. Yeah, so we all have the four of us that kind of are doing some of the the making sure we're holding ourselves accountable to getting this out in a way and to the right people and so having more than just one perspective is, is really helpful um, some of the the work that some of if you saw the articles the prepare framework really comes out of the psychologists association for schools and it, and so brenda is a school psychologist and so she helps with that Gina's in special services and Ed being our facilities person and, uh, helps give us a broader perspective. We will have a district committee as well that has at least one rep from each of our buildings, so we're sharing what's happening in each of the buildings and getting ideas and checking progress, learning from each other that way, and then each building will have a committee. So they'll have their work represented at a district committee, and then we have this steering committee that's sitting here. So the planning that went into doing that prepared training, we probably spent, I'll bet you, uh, six months kind of getting ready for that and um, Heidi Nissler was part of that before and Gina has stepped in to fill her role when, when Heidi left and so they, they all played just a really critical and important role in making this happen and are going to play a really important role for us going forward as well so I'll let them talk about the day a little bit and um, yeah. take any questions you might have. Yeah. So, yeah. Before you get going, and I know it was in that same paper, and I, sometimes we take it for granted. You had 115 members of our school staff show up on, and that was a Friday, right? 
Thursday. Thursday, August 15th, middle of summer, um, to, to work. And it was people from all different, you know, facets of our, our school district. And so that's just impressive in itself. And I think sometimes we take for granted that, oh, you just throw it out there and people show up. No, they, they did an unbelievable amount of work on the front end to, you know, we wanted a mix of people, different jobs, different things. And so, you know, even just seeing that and being, being there, that was impressive uh, in addition to the training. So thank you. I, I applaud your efforts just even getting it organized. So. I know he went through, they went through a little bit of this, I think, before leading into it. Um, but PREPARE model is an acronym that stands for Prevent, Reaffirm, Evaluate, Provide, Respond, and Examine. And that first workshop um, that we just talked about really focused more on the prevent and affirm parts of PREPARE. And then our second workshop will dive further into the other ones. Um, but we'll I'll kind of explain a little bit more. Um, and then feel free to jump in, Dave, when you so <laughs> um, But as he stated, what, what's nice about Pre PREPARE is it's a framework that's designed specifically for school settings based from school psychologists, um, but based on all of the research they have on um, crisis situations. Um, and it, um, it, now it's designed by school psychologists, but it's taking into account all of the research and things that have been done through um, the FBI and um, other agencies. So it really is a broad look at school safety. And so through all that research, then they came up with this balanced framework that's tailored, that we can tailor to fit our own district. And it focuses both on psychological and physical, which we'll get into a little bit more too, but um, it get, kind of gives us guidelines and assessments to um, use to kind of figure out what we're doing well and then where we want to approve upon. Um, but it gives us kind of just the outline and we get to use it the way we need to. And then it aligns our um, really well, which is why we want to move forward with it with other initiatives we're already putting in place in our district. Um, like we are starting some social emotional curriculum at the middle levels. Um, we have PBIS, positive behavior interventions and supports at the elementary levels, the academies, which are the small school within the big school, um, our big building security updates, our drills, you know, our ALICE training, our trauma-informed practices, all of those things are pieces and parts that we get to assess and kind of figure out what we're doing well and then, okay, where are the holes and how can we improve on these and that kind of thing. So, um, what makes PREPARE a little bit different and obviously, obviously because it comes from school psychologists, it balances both physical safety, like what do we do in a crisis situation to ensure people are physically safe and our buildings are physically safe, but it also takes into account that psychological piece of a crisis and kind of what happens after um, and during and what kinds of things can we do to decrease the likelihood that a crisis situation will happen in the first place. So um, that was a nice piece of this and part of I think why we thought it was a good addition to what we already had in place is to kind of look at both the physical and the psychological safety. Um, so what do we mean by psychological safety? Because it could just be like kids' emotional status, but it's not just that. Um, it's kind of looking at how can we develop a safer environment for our students um, from that psychological perspective. And so kind of promoting resiliency and school connections and connectedness. Um, so kind of the overall school culture, as well as those mental health pieces, making sure that there are good supports for our students in those ways. And research shows that having those pieces in place also kind of helps prevent problems like substance abuse, violence, truancy, and bullying. And again, you know, like some of the other pieces that we're doing fit with that. Um, there are a few of us that are doing Check and Connect, which is like a mentoring program to kind of help build kids, um, connection to school and feeling like they have a safe person to work with. So I just feel like this was really a good time to do this work. Um, I sat in training today for the trauma-informed um, schools piece. 
and they talked a lot about school safety and connectedness and how that's important in the social emotional learning and um, all of those pieces. So it just really seems to be a good seamless fit in a lot of other things that the district is doing at this time. So one of the things like with uh, our arts programming, we talk about expanding intramurals, clubs connected to each of the academies and all this. We, we think of those as just being the right things to do for kids and for, give them a broad experience. But it also connects the kids back to the school in, in a really purposeful way that has school safety implications as well. It's kids that feel isolated or alone that sometimes um, might lead to other things that, that, that hurt our environment for learning as well. So it's kind of a, it kind of opens your eyes to see the impact of those kind of the broad program that we can offer in our district really contributes to our connectedness and school safety ultimately as well. Which then has positive implications for learning. Mm -hmm. um, kids do better when they feel better. So, um, I believe you guys got a copy of the vulnerability assessment. Um, did they? <laughs> they did not. Okay. Oh. Um, we can we get that for you. Um, part of the PREPARE framework includes a vulnerability assessment, and it's a fairly lengthy document. It's, a, I think, probably about six or seven pages. And it's a document that is meant to be an ongoing assessment of kind of those psychological and physical safety aspects and what we have planned and um, where maybe we have strengths and where we have needs. And um, I think that's helpful because you can't always think of every single possible scenario of you know what could happen. But beyond that, just talking about strengths and needs, it really breaks it down into like, here are the possible threats that could happen. Um, what is the likelihood that those things are gonna happen here? So differentiating in Minnesota between a snowstorm that might mean that kids have to stay overnight in a building versus an earthquake. You know, an earthquake isn't as likely to happen. Could it happen? Yes, but less likely. And then also looking at the potential impact. So even if we had an earthquake in Minnesota, hopefully it wouldn't be significant. Um, and so it really helps you prioritize where our needs are and what we need to focus on first, those things that are more likely to happen, that are more likely to be catastrophic and have significant impact and that might last a long time. Um, they talk about natural crises like tornadoes and earthquakes, but then they also talk about human-caused crises like um, you know, school shooter, terrorism, those kinds of things. So, um, because obviously people's response is if it's a natural thing, we don't have as so much control over it, where um, if it's human cost, sometimes it has more of an impact on people. Um, so, it's not only looking at like what's most likely to happen, but those really catastrophic things, making sure that we're prioritizing those high so that we feel prepared and people feel safe that way. Um, so PREPARE provides us with that assessment and um, kind of an overall structure and we can t tweak it and add to it and um, kind of have it as an ongoing living document um, over time. But again, I think it fits really well with some of the work that we've already done in terms of looking at our buildings and whether or not they're physically safe and, and some of those pieces. So, um, And then as part of this Piece, it also looks at like how are we going to respond to a crisis if it happens so you know what do we do in terms of those psychological supports for children and families and our potential our community um, if something were to happen and so lastly just to kind of describe as Dave mentioned we're doing a district committee that has representation from every building so each building will have a committee and then one of the representatives from that building then will report to us, um, to the bigger district committee. Um, we're just the organizers. <laughs> um, um, and then we ask them to complete that vulnerability assessment, which I can run and get copies for after and hand them out, but um, to, by October 31st. Um, so that way, and to determine who's on their building level committees, and PREPARE gives you a nice idea of like who they suggest to be on those committees. Um, 
And then our second, that second workshop that we had mentioned is October on October 9th and 10th, which is really focusing more on the psychological, mental health, the intervention, the intervention pieces. pieces and the response pieces. So that will be more of our mental health specialists and then some admin and teacher representatives on that one. Um, and then through all of that, once we have all of that, we'll do the identification and prioritization of those needs and along with that probability and potential impact piece. Um, and then either connect it to plans that are already in place, because maybe one building's doing something well and another one, it, like just connect them the way we need to and then or take action steps where we feel like we need to improve upon something. I just want to add on that could the uh, district committee also we're having representation of each building but we're we're bringing in represent representation of each group we're trying to have a building admin in there some para teachers food service custodial so we're getting the lens of different groups if it's just all teachers and that we might forget the aspect safety of the kitchen or something like that so we are bringing those people in so we have the lens of everybody they're all the groups the workshop one that Mike was talking about was why we had such a wide range because we built the building committees that came in that not committees but groups that came in for that first one all like that to ask for the custodial nurse te gen ed teacher special ed teacher social worker side like it was a well-rounded group so we could get those different lenses because they're all important parts so Dean, i have a question the the workshop number two would that would you expect the same pool of people who attend one to attend it or is it a different group because the focus is different different group okay it's some of the same people yeah. but it's really more on the mental health aspect um, in terms of like evaluating the situation and where kids are at and risk assessments and things like that but the people who attended the first one you don't have to have attended the first one to attend the second one necessarily no, no like there was one of the school psychologists that was on a family vacation for um, the first one, but she'll still participate in the second one. But for the most part, it really is a subset of that first that's, group. That's yeah. 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 It's a smaller, the, sec, the part two is a smaller workshop group. Now, have you guys um, consulted with the school resource officers on this? They're also on our list. Um, they were invited to the first one. Um, an SRO did not make it for the first one, but an SRO is on the list for the second one yeah. as well. Okay. And I would anticipate that they'll definitely be part of the building level committees. For sure. Yeah. But no, that's a good question. So once we've kind of got this assessment done, you've had workshops, what's the annual or ongoing plan for PREPARE for the district? So part of it obviously is just ongoing training for staff. We have turnover every sure. year and making sure everybody kind of knows what's going on, but it's also kind of really ongoing work and looking at like, you know, anything that may have happened during the year, even as simple as a fire drill, like what went well with it, what could we improve on. Um, they talk a lot about doing like tabletop um, discussions. So you throw out like just random scenarios, maybe from the news or, you know, something just completely made up and you present it at those tabletop discussions and people on that committee talk about do we have a plan to deal with this and if not is this something that we should maybe discuss or we have pieces of a plan but you know maybe we feel like this needs to be shored up a little bit more so you're kind of always constantly evaluating and also just keeping it fresh in people's minds about what are our plans and how should i be responding and what is my role um, and it also another piece um, that they did during workshop one is they talked a lot about like using the same language as our um, community-based resources so the police and fire and you know making sure that if it's a significant thing that we would have contact with outside mental health providers that might help out but then also kind of framing like what would our expectations of that look like um, and using common language like the incident command center and um, some of those pieces of not necessarily school terms but would allow us to kind of more seamlessly respond in a crisis situation so that we're all um, speaking the same language so to speak and then re also redoing the vulnerability assessments that's not just a one-time thing that's something you know we'll set up as a committee are we going to do it yearly 
twice a year and what we're going to do. And that right there points out a lot of what we need to work on. And when you get the vulnerability assessment, it goes from very simple things, um, because one of the things they talked about is like what your schools look like, which thankfully we have great custodial staff that take excellent care of our buildings. But um, you know, like if you have a bunch of garbage laying in your front lawn of your school, it kind of, if I want to do harm, if I see that, I think to myself, like, oh, this may be a good place to do that kind of thing. Whereas if you have, you know, clean lawn and murals on the wall and welcoming messages to people, um, that it's less likely to invite trouble, so to speak. And so that vulnerability assessment goes from pretty significant things to really simple things, like do you have welcoming murals on your walls? I think combining the um, physical safety with the psychological is genius, and I'm so glad that you're doing this. Um, and I know you couldn't talk about every kind of social emotional program that's in our schools, but ju from just what the little bit you mentioned, it kind of sounds a little bit like K-8. We have pretty good um, curriculum support for social emotional. It doesn't sound like the high school has the academies, but I don't think there's curriculum support there for social emotional kinds of things. Um, some of the academy, well, all of the academies, I believe, but I can't say for sure because I don't go to all their meetings, <laughs> um, are doing some of the um, six C's work oh. and they choose like one of those areas a month and are working on um, different things in the homerooms and things to help support that. And the six C's has curriculum support? It's or? not a specific curriculum. The academies are building that within their academy. So I'm, I go to all the meetings for arts and communication and um, we had, um, like in, around Thanksgiving, they made placemats for um, people at St. Bird's and um, a couple of the other elder care places in town. Um, so they, they choose a, yeah, a project or something to kind of, or they do little mini lessons in class, but they're building that as an academy. You know what they also, and I think it's been floating through on our web page is this grant that the high school has around this ACES training, oh. which Brenda alluded to today, that adverse child experience is right now, how that often leads into more challenges. And, and so the whole entire high school staff today had the first three of 12 oh, hours that okay. they're having on right, that. That's the very thing that's one today. About. Yeah, so okay. that's And there are some of us that are doing the check and connect. And, um, and then it's, even simple little things like, um, again, in the Arts and Communication Academy last year, we did a kind of standardized intervention for kids that um, had issues with truancy, where we called it AMP, um, an attendance mentor program. And we sent home letters to parents saying, you know, we've noticed that your student's struggling a little bit with their attendance, and we'd like to do an intervention to kind of help boost that. And so we had um, teachers in the academy um, paired up with a student and met with them for five to 15 minutes once a week and kind of set a goal for attendance with each student um, and reviewed their attendance from the previous week and whether or not they had met their goal and um, they got little you know rewards sometimes it was leaving two minutes before the bell to go to lunch so you don't end up in the stampede uh, <laughs> and you know a free ice cream cone from Dairy Queen or whatever that Dairy Queen had provided to us so um, and then we really had very good response to that. It really did improve the students' attendance, which made the teachers feel good about the fact that they were taking the time to do that. And um, my understanding is that this year we'll be expanding that to the entire high school. So um, there are other things that maybe aren't a program, but that are being done to kind of address some of these things as okay. well. Thank you. We appreciate the update. Um, David kind of wet our whistle, so to speak, before talking about this. And of course, really nice article on the paper. But it takes a lot of effort, a lot of preparation, a lot of time in your part. Everyone else has pitched in. So we thank you because this is about as important as it gets. Um, we hope that we never have to apply these kinds of things. But it's nice to know that we're prepared, no pun intended, um, you know, when the time comes to do the best we possibly can.
So thank you very, very much. And please yes. communicate that thanks to the broader committee. You're the steering committee, but the broader <laughs> committee. We, uh, we appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thank thanks you. for having me. All right, we'll go back to the agenda and outline. And Jeff, really, now you can't come. Oh, you didn't go there. Yeah, board book, the bottom yeah. two options were away. I can't do it. I can't see it. But yeah. huh. Okay. I'll take a look at it. So we're going to have a finance update. Uh, Jeff, take her away. I'm trying, Jeff. All right, we sir, I'll bring up the little book. report. Maybe. Okay. There it is. Sorry, Jeff. There we go. That's fine. You can must have just go to the board. No, we take board it. Board glitch, so to speak. Thank there you. you are. Thank you. Okay, so I just wanted to um, kind of give this this report will kind of follow what we what I was doing on a monthly basis. Um, so I'm still looking at the prior year. Um, it's called preliminary audit because uh, final off, <laughs> and I'll and I'll kind of walk you through why that's the case. Uh, so just a couple things here. Uh, we're following Minnesota statute uh, 123B 75 to 77. So we are the public school district of Minnesota adopt the financial accounting and reporting standards, uh, known as UFARS, the Uniform Financial Accounting Reporting System. Um, we have to have an annual audit, and audited statements need to re be reported to the Commissioner of Education by November 30, and so that's for the previous year. So again, our audit right now is for the 18-19 school year, um, and then audit must be conduct conducted in compliance with generally accepted governmental auditing standards, Federal Single Audit Act, and Minnesota Legal Compliance Guide issued by a state audit. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about that. Under the under those statutes, we're we're under what's called a modified um, modified accrual accounting. Uh, so I can't come here at, right at June 30 and say here's where we are. Uh, and the reasons for that: so revenues and expenditures in the center part there are recorded in a manner which clearly clearly indicates they are applicable to a specific county period or fund. Kind of what that means on the bottom. Um, so as we were talking earlier in our in our uh, with our finance group before the meeting, I know we'll get some special education tuition bills, and so we don't have them yet. We'll have get bills from probably the intermediate districts. They'll be related to tuition for last year. So we have to book accounting. They will book that back in into uh, in the prior year. So those are probably the Big things right now that we haven't we haven't finished. Uh, I know I've got some summer school transportation bills that we haven't processed yet. Uh, so those kinds of things. And then uh, our July and August payrolls. So the summer we call it the summer pay for licensed staff. That all relates to it's about four and a half million dollars. That all relates back to the prior year. So that all gets that those expenses get put in there. And then we'll have um, state aid, general education aid, will be paid to us in um, August and September. But that again is related to uh, to the prior year. So we'll know those. There's one piece uh, of state aid that. Um, so we basically know that state aids. Once we know what our enrollment is, we finalize that. We know what that general education aid is going to look like. Uh, we will work with the auditors on deciding what special education aid entitlement will be. Uh, and we'll, we'll book that. Actually, we already have that booked, um, what we think it's going to be. But we won't know the actual number until probably next May. So it'll be May of, May of 20, and we'll know exactly what we were supposed to get, the, the exact entitlement for the 1819 school year. So, so from an audit perspective, so you get so we're going to say our entitlement is is 9.8 million, and that's what we'll book. That becomes revenue, and then it's 9.81 or 9.7, and that just rolls through the following year as a plus or minus audit adjustment. So 
Hopefully you're close so you don't have big adjustments. I think last year we actually missed that by $30,000. I mean, that was a, about a $9.5 million item last year. So, so I think fairly close. But that's the big thing that's, that's out there. So uh, again, that's why we're calling this preliminary audit. But I, I like to do this report at this time of year so we know we're far enough down the road with audit preparation. Um, we know how things are looking. I don't want the board to have to wait until audit report in November, December, maybe it's January sometimes to know where the district's at. So, um, so we put this together. Um, it's kind of where we are. It anticipates some of those things I was talking about. Um, so we we are anticipating some additional uh, special special education bills. And I mentioned that I've got some transportation bills. All of that is kind of built in here. Um, so you're seeing that reflected. So if you look at uh, FY19 received year to date, or maybe we should call that booked year to date. So, but in the financial, um, so our revenues are at, at we have budgeted 98.1 or at 97.9. Uh, so we missed by not very much, uh, pretty small percentage. And then going down on the expenditure side, um, I think our, our salaries and wages came in at 98%, so that was a, that was a good thing. Um, we should build, if you get down to that revenue over or under expenditures, we should build about a million and a half dollars um, of fund balance for the, for the current year. And then that should play out, and there'll be some adjustments between those, those various uh, component funds, restricted funds, but that basically should be how things will play out. And, uh, you know, again, I do this so the board, you get a good feel, okay, we're in, we're in good shape. Uh, things could change by, we're talking $100 million, things could change by 100, 200, but, they're, but they won't change, I, I'll say that, they won't change significantly. Uh, but as, you know, we'll play out some of those um, additional receivables, additional uh, expenses that could finalize things. So auditors are, Set to be here the week of September 9th, I think. Uh, and we'll probably be here for three, four days, and then we'll really start to finalize things. So, but we think this is how this is how things will play out, and I wanted the board to see that. So, you don't have to wait for the audit report. And we think we were talking to the finance committee that the audit actual presentation to us could be as early as late October, if not, it'll be in November. Yeah, I would like to. Yeah, I've always. <laughs> I always like to get that audit right. done, uh, and so it could be having them here in September. I don't think we got them here until probably mid-October last year, so this is oh, like four or five weeks. So yeah, we so should have them. For, for the actual September 9th, so they'll be here that week. Well, oh, they're here, you know, and, and there may be some things that I think some things I mentioned, the uh, fixed assets, stuff we don't like to do. That they'll have to come back and take a look at, but some of the pension distribution. Uh, so, you know, if we actually got them out of here in one week, they probably could turn a reporter on in a couple of weeks. But there will probably be a couple of weeks. And they, they do like to look, the state will put out a, um, a spe another special education run, and that's usually, that's sometimes, that's sometimes that's early October. They like to look at that one before they actually, okay, yeah, this is your. This is your number. So that can hold us up a little bit. In any event, we'll be we'll be earlier than I think than it's been. Well we appreciate that preliminary view and it gives us a flavor. Yeah, and that's the purpose of the end. So that's perfect. Yeah. It's good news. Yep. Comments are quite yep. That's okay. I was gonna say, yeah, and poor decision making and that's outstanding, but you know, what Jeff's doing I think is not universal amongst finance directors and business managers. And I'm greatly appreciative because there's a whole bunch of other kind of spin-off learning that comes out of this process. And it gives us two or three more months, you know, if you're going to make a change for the following school year. And I think, uh, you know, one of those, you know, is around, you know, an, an analysis of enrollment, an analysis of the staffing model. You kind of get a chance to go back and go, all right, how did that work? 
in actuality and can you know look at the real figures rather than getting you know the first thought of that in late November well we're getting it in you know here in the middle of August so I, I'm greatly appreciative I have some peers that say you take information to the board before your own is because yeah, I'm old and crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, I think I'm, but I think I'm pretty accurate. I was just going to say, you're going to be pretty accurate. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Crazy as a fox, I think. <laughs> Other comments or questions? Looks great. Yeah. yeah. Right. We'll look for the final report, but thank you for the yep. heads up. You bet. And the good news. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Thank, thank you, you. Jeff. All right, let's resume. Uh, Dave? You want to talk about middle school attendance area planning for 2021, 20, 20 21. Correct. So, so, what I tried to do, it, you saw, you've seen this. Let me back up here. This is a document that I started putting together the last time that outlined some of the criteria that were considered when we were doing this work before, right. which was the criteria that was used in prior times, so eight years ago or nine years ago now, that that was done. So what I, got, we got a lot of questions last time of what's the most important. So I added this not ranked in priority order. It really could say there is no priority other than schools being over capacity. That's what kicks this off. Beyond that, this is all part of a soup that all these things get considered, but one is not more important than the other. Other than, here's the capacity, we are over it or projected to be over it. That's the top priority, otherwise we wouldn't be doing this, okay? So I look at this whole document, even though it's not watermarked with draft, as a draft. I'm trying to lay out some kind of process here. And so I even went back and through in some dates where we have started this conversation because it, it, it's not a new one, right? So even back in March, we started looking at this and seeing that we might have uh, some potential issues. In July, we did this at the, the board uh, retreat. Um, I threw in here that we even had a similar discussion at the Community Facilities Task Force that that group almost drew the same conclusion. They could see that there was a, an issue there, even though that really wasn't one of our topics that it came up because it was so evident. And then tonight, what I want to do is have you look at this and start to see, does it make some sense? Um, do we want to set a kind of a, a, a date for us where we really want to put this out there for a first and second reading? How do we want to, you know, I, I briefly talked with uh, Ashley and Crystal about this, but what a, a public communication plan can look like and how we seek feedback. Um, I think it's a little different uh, situation than what we've done here in the past because usually there's been another building that comes along with this. This is different than that. And so, <laughs> Having a whole committee or task force driven process, I don't know if that's what makes the most sense here. Or we we make sure we're communicating, we give a chance for feedback, but we kind of just move forward with the work. So I, I guess I'm laying this out and trying to give us a, a place to start getting some guidance on and um, looking for some input. I don't like if you want to add anything. Well, I was going to say, you mentioned those dates earlier, including that summer board retreat, and I think we had really good conversations, but they were somewhat general in nature. So Dave is trying to, you know, start to funnel this down a track, get more specific in nature, and we purposely use the word, you know, confirm with the board. It, you know, is this the right track? Is, are we missing something? Um, you know, too aggressive, not aggressive enough? But it, it's it's to you know rather than having another general conversation without anything down, let kind of some critical feedback of this draft plan, if you will. And because what just to add to that, there, there are some dates where it makes sense to say we're going to be done by this date. And um, talking to our tech people and our two middle school principals. Um, when you start registering, because they do online registration, even though they share a common catalog for courses, kids 
log into their school and they register that way. And I understand it's kind of a cumbersome process if you're moving kids in mass to, to walk them across the two. So having it done before that registration process, there, there's some value in that. And they usually have done that in late January. They could even push it, I think I, I was told, in mid-February. So um, there's that, plus there's, once we know that and we get ideas of numbers, we certainly would want to have this done, even if we were willing to take on the, 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 tech, the technical requirements of moving kids and just letting them register kind of generically. Um, before we do staffing, obviously, we need to have this done because we need to, there's staff moves associated with this as well. Yeah, so that's, oh, sorry, that's, was that what I was thinking was I'd hate to delay staff, if we delay a registration until mid-February, Often staffing is not taking place till after that. By then, we're already building the budget. We're already trying to. So I guess I would look for a, a shorter burn, and us making the final decision yet this calendar year in my mind, so that people can register in early January as, as they have in the past. And they they've been mid to late January. Have they? Okay. And so we, I, I'm not. Yeah. Maybe I have a little bit. Sure. I'm, well, <laughs> I'm rolling it out a little bit further, but um, I think there's still. I think we could still not bump up against this and go shortly after the new year. Sorry. Do we need three months to develop answers to open yes. issues, have public meetings, et cetera? Uh, I. We could do it quicker than that. And I don't know what order it's going to happen in scenarios, and maybe those can happen kind of parallel at the same time. So last time we reboundaried middle schools, about 10 years ago, <laughs> nine years ago, and I remember we booked West Auditorium to have it because we thought there'd be a groundswell of people who had passion about middle school boundaries. And I was the one person in the audience. And this isn't reboundering kindergarten or elementary. This is middle of middle. I'm not saying nobody cares, but I'm saying at that time when we had been six, seven in one building and eight, nine in the other, we had to divide the town. It was okay, do what you have to do, right? So I think there's a little different different scope of emotion involved just from you know, 10 years ago. I just think three months is, is a long time. Since it's not a wholesale entire district shift, but that's just my feedback. Can you, can you scroll down on the calendar? And could we potentially have that second reading in January? For that would be the approval. I would be assuming of here's what it's going to be. Um, the final decision instead of waiting until February. So, so that's a what a week, two two weeks. <coughs> so which which would be the final date? One six or one twenty seven? And could it be one six, Mike? Is that a what you had it as an organization? You get your board meeting. That's that'd be yeah, pretty tough to. It's a, yeah. it's a rough one to do it on. Yeah. So if we make a final decision on the twenty seventh. But the 27th is even delaying registration now by two or three weeks, right? Because if they release the registration guides by mid-January and we want them to know what school they're going to before the reg guides go out, I'm feeling like this needs to be done in December. Mostly because I don't want to let Reggie off the hook. But the registration will still I mean, how much time would, would you yeah. need, Joe, to get that figured into the budget once it's done? Shouldn't be overly difficult. A couple. I, I'm not sure. Jeff might know. How long? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm not sure the question either. But the way I'm not sure what the budget people, issue is. Not just movie teachers or whatever, but it, it might be the same. But the way in making a decision, how does that impact budget staffing decisions? I don't. I don't think. I don't think there's big budget implications. No. No. So if, if if I went to the middle school, if, just to play this out for a second, if we said 
the 27th was the second reading. Kind of the decision is made before that, right? You're, you're given one last window. Yeah. It's probably done at that point. Right. Are you comfortable registering based on a first reading? I mean, you know, so if not, I could go back and say to the middle school principals and our tech team, does this mess us up? Yeah. Yeah. Does, we're we're this, assuming that. But let's well, find out. Yeah. Well, do we have to have exactly. the two public meetings, or can there be some sort of way of electronic? You know, have one listening session, or maybe one at a board meeting. It feels like we're we're booking October, and November for public meetings. Do we need that? I mean, there sure be different <coughs> avenues to provide feedback. Yeah. Not just meetings. Yeah. I mean, could we do it like a podcast? Or do we need two public meetings? Well, you're trying to you're trying to be accessible as right. possible. Yeah, go ahead. That's what I mean. You know, trying to shorten up that September through December timeline. Can we cut a week or two off? Yeah. Yeah. Because last time, granted, it was for elementary schools. Mm -hmm. um, the turnout for both meetings was very low. Mm -hmm. But after we came forward, or Javi Broom came forward and said, here are the different options or my recommendations, that's when everyone came forward and said, well, wait a minute, we didn't have enough time to voice our concerns. So I think to err on the side of caution, we should offer two yes. meetings. But that's, I think that's gonna happen no matter what. The people who move are gonna be the people who, people who are impacted are gonna come out after the fact. Sure. So whether we have two sessions or 40, people are going to wait to hear what the final recommendation is and then those impact will happen. I, I think yeah, exactly right. the only one session, it just comes off as not giving people enough oh, yeah. So I think two just as our public but face is worthwhile. Does it need to be two months worth of waiting? Right. For no, probably not. That's what I mean. I think there's opportunity to shorten up that window between September and December 31st. And, and I think you're probably right. And correct me if I'm hearing this wrong. Here, you know, we want to be maybe a little bit more aggressive about getting draft proposals, which mm -hmm. means then it's going to be more of you know, kind of administrative efforts on the forefront than seeking feedback, rather than task force, and then look to lay out where that can be presented multiple times to to gather meaningful feedback from the community, with the hope that. We could make a final decision, if possible, prior to the end of the year. Now we, you know, there is uh, just one board meeting in each November and December too. So, but is that accurate, or am I missing something? That'd be my preference. Yeah. I'll speak for the whole board. So that would mean a first reading in November, a second reading in December, if that's possible without putting undue stress. I mean, I don't want to make, because you've still got to build the models, right? We need to do that, yep. yeah. And we, and we want to go out at least twice. Yeah. We want to respond to that. And I, I think some of these, I think sometimes there's devil in the details, as they say, mm -hmm. like rolling it up, like how you handle a kid who's gone to middle school east for sixth grade and seventh grade. They get it stay there for eighth grade even if their area is west now and now i'm i'm in east for my eighth grade year but i have a sixth grade sibling coming in that now is in the west attendance area some of those kind of decisions can be those are the ones that create lots of emotion yeah. sometimes mm -hmm. in our heart as, as well and how we decide to deal with people that just have a preference and want to transfer whether we allow that or not, we'll need to make decisions about that. Mm -hmm. And so some of those might take a, in addition to generating scenarios, is what's our position on how we're gonna handle some of these nuances of it as well. Do we have an opportunity to have some sort of information or have a table that at conferences at West and East in November? I mean, we could certainly do something like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And put together some information. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have somebody there to answer yeah. questions. Do you, do Take suggestions. Whatever. I mean, that would be a, you're not going to reach everybody, but you're going to 
it, it took quite chance to get it's more. Your, yeah. It's your target audience right, right. there. Right. Right. And having a variety of presentation types, I think, makes good sense. Or maybe people can't make it to a specific date, but they've already mm -hmm. figured they're coming to conferences. Right. So that's the opportunity to get in front of the most people. My observation is two things, Dave, and, and the second one builds off the first one. You do have uh, at the top of the screen there, 99 or 923. I'll make a request right now that it be 923. And that's because we know we're going to be short a few board members on the night. And I think this topic, we want to have full representation. So not only did you prefer it, I'm saying let's make that the 923 meeting. Here, here. My second comment <laughs> then is, my second comment then is, would it be possible, and I'm, I'm, I'm hearing uh, some consensus on the board at least that looking for ways to shorten this, but I feel like we should throw it back in your court to say what is your, your being the, the team that has to do this, preferred timeline. And you could bring that to us on the 23rd, knowing that we're kind of saying don't delay this any more than you need to, but if your preferred timeline is, gosh, we get this done in December, so be it. If your preferred timeline is we're concerned about compressing this too much, thus we need to bleed it over until X, whatever X. I'd like to hear what you guys say, because you've given three different dates now. Yeah. Here. I'd like you guys to come back. Personally, I would like you guys to come back and say, look, we could map this out. This is what we choose, and then we can draw on that. And I was going to add one thing to that timeline that even though that org organizational meeting it typically would be used for other things, just thinking calendar wise, that potentially could be one of those dates and it might even be the second reading if that's kind of where my head was because yeah. if you if you I think Matt said when you come out with the first reading you've kind of put the cards at the table. You've said this is the preferred proposal. You now have a fairly sizable gap for people to kind of noodle on that, massage that, chew on it, whatever. And then you've got an opportunity to come back in January to actually you know bless or modify as need be. So that that seems to get you earlier, like mm -hmm. you're talking about, but not overly compressing it. But my point was, I think if you, your team came back and said, look, not just here's the choice dates, or choices of dates, here's what we would suggest. That would be helpful. We can do that, and I think then I'd want Ashley and Mike, obviously, to help with kind of what our communication plan is oh, sure. for yeah. feedback and sure. all on that. Yeah. So, so we will come with that on the 23rd. Okay. Okay. If, if, is that good? That's good. Yeah, okay. That's fine. And, and so I appreciate that. If you feel strongly about something on there, here, compress it. Earlier is better. Don't mess up your other processes. We'll go through that. I think it's don't mess up your other processes, which may mean you need to compress this because we don't want to delay registration, right. staffing. It's all these things that kind of the dominoes that have to fall. Yeah, I'd like to have our staff know what building they're in yeah. sooner rather than right. later. Exactly. Sometimes that's unavoidable, but I, I will say. Seems like we've gotten there, but looking at as we've tracked enrollment this summer through to the current date, we we need something's got to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, absolutely. so we we've got to do it. Yep. Yeah. I think everybody on that task force, everybody I've talked to at IV or wherever it is, but said what's going on? Why is he so so small? But we West so big. It's, yeah. it's not if anymore. Oh, it it needs to happen. Okay. Yeah. We need to make sure that we include fifth graders as well. So the elementary schools get mm -hmm. some sort of information presented as well. Right. Because yeah. that's, that's the that that they're that's thinking. Thinking. Yeah. How are we going to yeah. get to set up these schools for the information during conferences? Say that one more time. Who are we going to get to set up these schools to give out the information during conferences? Some of us, some of us I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All oh, right. I would think so. Yes. With a consultant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those will be fun tables. Are, are we, um, has there been any discussion yet about whether or not we will stick with feeder schools? You know what, I put, uh, at the top I put other considerations, feeder schools consider, oh, but not a determining thing. Oh, okay. I don't oh, think okay. we can. We don't Just to, I don't think the math would not work I think we have to upset that out. You could still have, it, obviously the geography, there's going to be chunks, right? Right. right. And um, so. But we'd, we'd be moving a lot more kids at that point in time to, to make the math balance. Yep. 
and those of you, you know what, it was actually encouraging and discouraging at the same time to hear <coughs> Michael Kursky talk about the projections for shot. It's very exciting. It is. It is. And it was it is. mostly positive. I mean, yeah. very positive. But at the same time, all these things are out there, but he's not willing to put a stake in the ground on dates or numbers or anything. It's really complicated. No, you tried three different times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you a different way. <laughs> he was he was good at not answering, but he was all, he's a very knowledgeable guy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Did we just segue to All right, Dave. Do you feel like you've got yeah. the direction you kind of you were looking for tonight to then come back on the twenty third with a plan, proposed plan to move forward? Yeah. And some of these, like I said, double in the detail things, how we handle that scenario of siblings and finishing yeah. up your school what transportation might look like depending on our decisions that we make because uh, if we decide to grandfather some people in that changes what we need to do yeah. from a transportation perspective as well uh, if you but the good news are proximity of the two schools is pretty yeah. close with yeah that's true, we could shuttle. If, if you have strong feelings or thoughts about any of those, um, I, I, I guess it, I would be interested in hearing what your thoughts on that. We can certainly start thinking through that and lay something out there. But as a board, if you have strong feelings about it, <coughs> uh, not tonight, but at some point, that would be great as well. All right, thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Or follow. All right, let's move on to uh, Section A, 8.1, Community Facilities Task Force Update. Um, so the Facility Committee, I'll turn to you, Judy. To, okay. uh, I, I see we have some of the information that was given to us at the meeting, and I will say that it was, I thought, really interesting information, especially from Michael Kursky. Kursky? Kursky. 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 Key. 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 That's Key. what I thought. Okay. Okay. Um, and you know, I can see why he didn't want to be pinned down because <laughs> demographic prediction, you know, it, it's got some science in there, research, but you know, it's not it's pure science, it's, you know, some figuring and everything. But um, his overall um, description of what we can expect as a school district was pretty impressive. One thing that he said that especially um, spoke to me. Um, he said, you can expect to have a consistent number of students into the foreseeable future. And that's a good thing. It's a very good thing. Also, we have several housing additions that are coming on in the next months to a few years. Um, he said that our district will remain a relatively young community, which isn't usually the progression of a community. But he said because of the jobs here, that the anticipation was that it remains young families with children. So um, another thing that I thought was, you know, with a couple of stars, um, he said right now places like Eden Prairie are able to sustain their bonding costs through commercial property. And he said Shakopee is about 10 years away from that. Now that would be great if that came true, if we had that kind of support through taxes we collected from um, industrial. Um, and then Kevin McGully from UNESCO spoke. Um, he said, because we have so many newer buildings, we're really better off than many districts are, especially outstate, but even within the um, <coughs> metro area. However, there are many needs that have been planned for in a 10-year timeline using um, LTFM and district funds. And of course, a lot of that is um, Pearson and Central. Already started um, some of the work on um, Sweeney. Um, something that was a little bit surprising was that Pearson, according to the information we were given, would actually take more money to meet facilities needs than Central. It's a bigger building. Maintenance. And that was the answer. Yeah. Maintenance, not overall overhaul. Not changing the structure. Correct. The not changing it for academics. Okay. Changing it for safety. Okay. That was the, the four and five rated things, right? Yeah. Right. Right. Like, the yeah, the things. That whatever category that the, the highest urgency. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it has the. I, I, I don't want to cut you off. I have a no, question. that's kind of my summary. I'm trying to remember, is, have you now reached 
kind of the conclusion of the information download point and you start to move to discussion and recommendations? I or is there some way? Well, we're, we're going to meet. Two tours. We're going to, yeah, the tours okay. I think will be essential okay. to starting no. to generate a conversation. Um, just one thing that I've got a question on. Okay. Are we looking at adding buildings or just? That's not the purview. This, 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 this task force is all about Pearson and Central and yeah. repurposing. Yeah. 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 But it is interesting on, on these handouts that Michael Kursky provided. Mm -hmm. If you kind of overlay the, the, the 2040 plan versus the next page, and you look at a lot of the greenfield development or developing new development, right, as opposed to the, the red is more the infill or redevelopment, a lot of it's commercial, like like you were saying, right? It's which is good for tax, which great for good, tax base, yeah. um, but a lot of it's in the yellow in the residential, and there's some big chunks um, that you know it hasn't. I, I don't think. I think part of the reason Michael was so hesitant to be pinned down on bids, right, was he was talking about purchases that haven't been announced yet, mm -hmm. um, and the availability of credit and money right now. He, what did he say? Something like a mortgage on an apartment building was something like three point two percent. So a builder. It's money's very e easily available right now, right. so I mean it, we could see another boom for right now, or it could be sustained over the next five years. Especially because we've had an artificial opposite of boom. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've had an artificial. We've had a freeze. We yeah. Literally had a freeze, and so we have not had much building, and so that builds up a pent up yeah. want. And it sounds like in the next, within the next five years, there could be an upwards amount of about 600 uh, places to live, whether it's a combination of apartments, townhomes, single family. There are just that many developments that are just exploding. Um, like the gravel pit, it sounds like that's going to be starting here in the next 12 months. They're going to start putting homes in there. Uh, what was the other? Well, house? I thought it was 600 on that development home. Well, was what he was speculating. Yeah, so he's speculating. Yeah. Uh, but like the West End, they said, what was it, D.R. Horton said, the yellow tree is over before that's being built, and now they can't build them fast enough. They're selling right. before they're built. And, and they're selling. The other part that he talked length about was the amount of money pouring into town. We we're starting to get vendors who we never thought, like daycare providers who are otherwise in Excelsior, YZ, and Edina, are coming here mm -hmm. because of the profile. The, Word. It's a different profile than tradition. So there are several indicators yeah. that this is happening that are we have some substantial growth in the human population. It's a good thing. There was a one encouraging. I, I did not understand. Is there a infant only child care center going for a year? Yes. Shot and that's full already. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get approval. I don't know. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that one's not full already. There's an application for a 48-bed infant daycare because infant daycare, the existing facilities are full six, nine months in advance when you don't even know you're having a child. Right. If you haven't signed up for daycare yet, it's you're not going to get about, in. Yeah, planning to have a baby based on when you can get the yeah. child in. It's like, wow, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. But so the that, people who want to build it believe it'll be the capacity maxed out immediately. And you know they researched it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I thought, you know, the population, he said, is about 42,000 in Shakopee today, but they're anticipating that to be well over 65,000 by 2040. And that's just the city? That's just the city. Yeah. So when is, when is the subdivision coming up by my house? <laughs> We didn't focus it, it, on your neighborhood. It's, it's going to get down there eventually. So. <laughs> it's a long ways away, right? All right. Give it, a good it was really interesting. Yeah, it was Sounds very good. Like, oh, and 100% like. um, attendance again. So it's a, a good committee. Good. Yeah. 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 All right. Any other comments? We'll move on. Uh, item 8.2. Ash, I think you want to talk to us about uh, the survey community events. Yes. everyone doing tonight? Good evening. Good. How are you? Good. All right. So as you all know, this summer, Baker Tilly conducted a community survey. 
on our school district. And to share the results of that survey, we are hosting two opportunities for the community to come out, learn about the survey, as well as have an opportunity to ask questions. Um, the first is Tuesday, August 27th. That's this Tuesday. It will be at the high school in the thrust stage space from 4.30 to 5.30. And then we are having a second community survey presentation event. That will be Tuesday, September 10th at Red Oak Elementary. And that event will be from 7 to 8 p.m. And we have sent all this information out uh, community-wide to staff, parents, um, all of our subscribers. Um, and it's also on our website as well. So information is out there. It's available, so we're just kind of waiting to see who will show up and provide you with the information. That's it. And this was all part of the plan to roll these out, so this is yes. no surprise. Okay. Here, we'll do this. So, all right, great. Do you want to talk about who's presenting? Sure. Uh, Superintendent Mike Redmond will be presenting uh, the information, and I will be there as well as Dave. To help answer any questions, and I know Christy, you plan to attend as well. I'll so do it tomorrow night. Perfect. 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 I'll go to the one at Red Oak. Here at my house. I should be able to. <coughs> what else has been planned for? <coughs> I don't do time. All right. Any other questions? <coughs> Great. We we'll look forward to having those two events and again share the community, share the information with the community in another format. Thanks for getting it out there. Thank oh, you. you're welcome. Thank you, guys. All right, we've already done 8.3, so we're going to move on to 9.1. Uh, and Jeff's going to come on back up. We're going to talk about uh, financial advisor. You've got a recommendation for us. I do. Yeah, we'd ask the board to uh, accept the proposal from, from uh, Baker Tilly for uh, financial advisory services. So it's, it's things like, um, obviously, this group was here doing the uh, community survey, but it's continuing disclosure for our bonds, um, looking at things like when it's time maybe to do a refunding on, on one of our bond issues. Uh, so it's those kinds of services. Uh, I think uh, you got the entire proposal. Uh, the fees are market. It's what you see with the other uh, other firms so I, and I think it's important since they've been here with maybe what's out in front of us in a year or two they've been here to the survey uh, probably makes sense to uh, to work with this group so I would say typically um, this is done during the reorganization meeting right Mike if you probably would have done. Uh, so again just uh, we would make that change to working with the bigger job question. Uh, why, go ahead, Chris, please. why are we recommending a change there just because we work with Baker Tilly for the survey or is there something that has happened with our current? No, no. No, no I can say. So we've worked with, uh, we've worked with others and been working with them. So I think that it, you know, they were here, Mike brought them in to, um, to work with the community <coughs> survey. Um, if we've got a referendum in the works a year or two down the road, it might be, they might have a leg up on gathering yeah, some of the information. So, no, and I would say there's no, I've worked with Ellers, our current uh, financial advisor. I've worked, I've worked with these guys, I've worked with Ellers. <coughs> um, I'd say they're all reputable, all, all good, good firms. So you can see in that proposal the, the breadth of work they do. So, with so Jeff, for the benefit of anyone watching and frankly for myself too, this is the fees for this is all I'm, I'm asking, I'm not, I don't know the answer, are project based. There's not a retainer fee. Right. right. All right. So we're not committing to anything at this point nope. other than we're going to nope. work with them. Nope. And if we have a project, it'll be based upon the fees and their, their going rates, if you will, yeah. for that individual yeah. project. Yeah. I, w I would say that. Um, since I've been here working with Ellers, um, other than maybe some small continuing disclosure, um, fees have been minimal. Right. So, yeah. What yeah, I'm we don't do firm is we're not signing ourselves up for. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Questions? 
we have a recommendation from our finance director um, to work with this group. And I think it's reasonable to listen to that council. So we are being asked to take action tonight. So with that in mind, I would be looking for a motion to approve the acceptance of this proposal. Thank you, Paul. Second. Second. Thank you, Joe. Any additional discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes, Jeff. Thank you. have your group, and I'm assuming you will obviously notify the others as well as part of that process. All right, thank you. All right, we move on to uh, 9.2. This is the second reading of policies that we had first reading at in our last meeting, Christy. Um, again, these policies that are for second reading tonight are basically just very, very minor changes, statutory um, type of changes within these documents. Uh, yeah, it's about all I can say about it. There isn't really anything to discuss. You're not so, going to give a dramatic reading of all of them? No, I could go through each one and <laughs> tell you, but. I think we've all had time to read through them. Yeah. Yeah. You can read all the changes in yeah. 30 yeah. seconds. Yeah. 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 All we need is the changes. Really. All right. I don't think we need to belabor this. Nope. Uh, so I'll look for a motion to approve, what is it, five? Five policies yes. as presented. Christy, why don't you make that motion? I'll make the motion. Chair? And I'll second it. Thank you, Judy. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes. Thank you. And thanks ongoing to the policy committee. I'm sure we'll have more to come. All right. Uh, we're going to take care of some of the miscellaneous items before we actually have our closed session. So let's do the uh, around the horn quickly to see if there's any other comments before we make. I'm going to start with Judy and go that way. Okay, I was quite ready for that. Um, <laughs> 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 Good basketball. That's right. Yeah. Um, not the CFC, but the other facilities committee is um, whittling down the needs list, various things that are discovered in the first year use of the building that needed a change of some sort. And i um, going to take a look at the wants list and see if there's money in whether or not there's money to balance how much of a need that one might right. be. So that's all I've got. Okay, Joe. Uh, we had the Finance Committee meeting earlier tonight. Um, basically everything we talked about has been discussed here. Uh, all good stuff from, from Jeff. And I, again, I'd like to thank Jeff for, for everything. And it was very sad to see that he is retiring. And uh, it's just a kind of a shock. Let's just put it that way. And uh, as school starts, uh, you know, teachers are back and everything, students going in, just want to wish all the teachers and students good luck. Um, I had posted a shirt that somebody had said, uh, I, I copied it from somewhere about teachers make every, well, I'm going to get this wrong, teachers make every other profession possible. And uh, <laughs> I, I, and I, I, I love that uh, as the, uh, as the son and brother of teachers, it, it's true. We all have gotten part of who we are from the teachers that we had. So I just want to say good luck to everybody. You're here. Nice. Christine. We had a uh, policy meeting tonight. We reviewed some more policies to get us up to current updates. So uh, you'll be seeing some of those at our September 23rd meeting. Um, and I attended uh, last Monday the new teacher welcome um, to the district uh, breakfast. A um, lot of energy in the room. It was very exciting to meet 60 some um, teacher staff members in the in the room. So uh, that was fun. I remember years when we had zero. A lot of years when we had zero. Wow. Dave, um, kind of revisiting my hope. My prior role, the North Star Accountability data, um, well, I think there was a, I think Ford got the embargo data today. The public release will be the 29th at noon, so Thursday. So I think they're back to being able to coincide that somewhat with the state fair. So you'll see that come up. Um, Got out and about to a few schools today, and it was very, you know, 
it's an exciting time, but I also, you know, everybody, I think, tossed and turned a little bit last night, but exciting to have teachers back in the buildings. And um, our Welcome Center is really busy. And um, one thing, we, we enroll a lot of kids, but we also know we have kids that are moving, so sometimes the net of what happened is hard to figure out. I know, so I throw out it, like today alone, they enrolled 21 students. But I don't, I don't know what the net of that will turn out to be between, and, and one other number, uh, just for some perspective, between August 16th and today, so actually 11 calendar days, I mentioned this earlier, there were 101 new registrations. We're, we're net positive on that, but I'm, I'm not even sure exactly how many that is. So they are really, really busy out there, and I think that'll continue at least through this week. And they're coming in from all over the place. Yeah, I mean, I, I was reading to these yeah. guys, it's from outside of the country, and Texas, and Illinois, and California, and Maine, Maine we had some. So it, it was a lot, and our neighbors too. There was Prior Lake and Prairie and Jordan. Jordan. So it's, it's all over the place. But it's a very busy time. So if you see, if you happen to be here during the day, uh, smile and pat Brenda and Connie on yeah. the back. Bob? Uh, uh, Dave hit it on the end. I was just going to share with that group. They've been really busy and they'll be busy tomorrow and they'll be busy on Wednesday and be that way the rest of the week. So. Sure. Okay. Jeff? Yeah. You've talked enough tonight, right? <laughs> 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 Keith? Well, it's just busy for everybody, I think. So thanks. Okay. Sarah? Um, two things. One is housekeeping. Um, just so that folks are aware, uh, this Thursday is the back to school event. That is posted as, as a meeting, a uh, public meeting. So if a quorum of the board does appear on Thursday morning, that works. Um, likewise, with the two um, community survey presentations, those are, are also posted as potentially a quorum of the board. So you don't need to be concerned about that either. So a little housekeeping. Also, just wanted to mention we're, we, we've come up on the one year anniversary of Gary's passing, so his uh, legacy, Gary Anger's legacy, lives on for another school into this coming school year. Very nice. Yeah. Um, we've been, okay, the Sabre football team um, has been selected to participate in the Vikings prep spotlight games. Uh, so the game will be September 20th against Eden Prairie. It's considered a home game, even though it will be at the TCO Stadium. Uh, and ticket information has already been posted online on athletics and activities. Nice. Yeah. I just want to echo the welcome back to school for all students, teachers, paras, custodians, food service, everybody working in our, in our school community. It's always an energetic time of year. I know. Okay. Paul? Um, I'm going to piggyback off of something that Matt and Ashley said. Um, you know, teachers, staff, students, let's have a good school year. Let's make it productive. And I know I discussed it before the meeting, but the uh, oh, yeah. seventh grade football players got invited to play exhibition games in U.S. Bank Stadium <coughs> the 15th of September. That's going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. so both, both games yeah. and those venues will be exciting. Yeah, that's wonderful. So is that at halftime, Paul? No, no, actually the Vikings are in Green Bay that day, so they get to play. Both both of our youth teams will be playing Mankato West teams. So they'll be full games. Oh, wow. Wow. That'd be exciting. Angel? Um, I attended Sabre Nation, the football event. Uh, a couple Fridays ago. That was kind of fun to see my little first grader run the thing. <laughs> so it was fun. There was a lot of people there. It was a good turnout. Um, and we had a lot of football players. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, for a lot of pictures of it. Yeah. It's amazing. And then Southwest Metro normally takes the summer off for school board meetings, but we had our first meeting last Tuesday, so we're back in session. It's a pretty light agenda, but we're back in it. Thanks for representing. Yeah, Red. Yeah, well, I'm always amazed at how quickly the, you know, June, July, and August seem to pass by. 
And I'm also amazed that, you know, I was here part-time in November and December, and now another eight months full-time, and that 10 months has, has flown by. Uh, so I'm excited, too, because it's my first start of the school year here in Shakopee, so, you know, we've had kids come back for activities, we had teachers and staff back today, and uh, the Tuesday after Labor Day, really excited uh, about the start of uh, this upcoming school year, which is going to be fantastic. The other thing, I've had a little bit of time to reflect, and one of those things, you know, coming from a smaller district as a superintendent, you, you get a little bit of knowledge in a lot of things, and you end up doing a lot of things, um, and I'm incredibly appreciative, and I, you know, I'm looking around the room here, you got Ashley and Sarah and Keith and Jeff and Bob and Dave, and I don't think they realize how much I appreciate them um, and just their level of professionalism and our other cabinet members and folks. And, and I truly do because, you know, I was the community ed director in Good you know. Uh, I was the HR director in Good you I was not the finance director, but I, I spent a lot of time, you know, kind of working in partnership. And we obviously didn't have a, an assistant superintendent. I was the communications director. <laughs> Uh, and so I really do, and it's just it's fun to watch people who are really good at what they do day in and day out, and, and we've got a great team here uh, at the district office as well. And so I think sometimes they get lost in the shuffle with the start of the year, but they're doing great work, and uh, I appreciate them tremendously. All of them and everyone else who's making it. Absolutely. So I just have one thing that I forgot yeah. to say. I wanted the high school. Um, like these are all running together here. The pickup schedule, picture day, the whole thing. That was last week. Mm -hmm. Last week. Last week. Okay. It was last week. It, I was first time at the high school having a child go through that whole thing. I thought this is going to be crazy with, you know, you're allocated a time and the freshmen all come and do their thing. But it was organized. It was you go here and then you do this and then you go here. I mean, it was... It was uh, very well organized, and we were in and out of there in less than an hour. So kudos to the high school awesome. high school staff for all their organizational skills that day because it was very well done. That's great. Nice. Dave, did I see you raise a finger? For that me? was me trying to talk, um, talk to those two. So, <laughs> Something you care to share with the rest of us? <laughs> Tell the rest of the class. That's right. I have one slide I need to change. Uh -huh. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, before we move to our closed session, I will get the highlights for benefits. And we're watching a couple things coming up. Uh, and Sarah, I hope I'm using the right actually one. Hold on, what I do with it. Yeah, I'm not. Okay, so yeah. we know that tomorrow, I'm going to just skip to tomorrow. We have community survey presentation we heard about tonight. Uh, we have facilities committee meeting, looks like, on Wednesday. Yeah, our next meeting is the 9th of September followed by the next and the second of the two community survey presentations. And then the 23rd is when we are back in front of the meeting. We've got committee meetings in advance of that. So I'll just stop there. So we've got several things coming up immediately and into September. All right. So with that, um, in order to have a discussion uh, that we are allowed to do in a closed session, we're actually going to move, I think first time for this new board, uh, into a closed session. Um, I don't know that I need to read it, but I will anyway. It's pursuant to Minnesota Statute 13B.03. A school board may, by majority vote in a public meeting, decide to close a meeting to consider strategies for labor negotiations. So I need a motion, second, and then with, by majority to move the closed session. Motion, second. Okay, so Paul and Matt. Any discussion on that? And again, the purpose, as stated, is for discussion Can we labor negotiations. delay starting the closed meeting for about three to five minutes? Yes, we can. We can take a break to do that. And it will be recorded uh, as we're required by state law. And then we'll come out of this. There will be no, just for anyone watching or anyone in the room, there will be no follow-on topics discussed. We'll come back. We will re-commence re uh, the meeting and then adjourn immediately. Okay? So with that, we're moving on the motion to go to closed session. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Sounds unanimous. Passes. So we are going to close session at this time. Yes. All right. I will reconvene the regular business session. We're just coming out of closed session where we have a labor negotiation strategy discussion at the board. In attendance was the full board, 
We also had with us uh, Director of Finance, Jeff Priest, and HR Director, Keith Gray. So with that, we will not conduct any other business. I will take a motion to close the business meeting. I so move. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> Second, Christy. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes. We are adjourned.